Okay. All right, the uh, record flip, we are back in session. Parties and council are present. Our jurors are not yet present. Council indicated that you had uh, some issues you wanted to bring up outside the presence of the jury before the jury came in. Is that right? That, that's correct, Your Honor. There's a, a few issues the uh, defense would like to uh, address. One, with the exhibits that were marked 933 through 945, I guess this morning, photographed through Sergeant Smith, and the other is a CNN video. I don't know which the court's pleasure is how you want to address those ones. Let's talk about the CNN video first. Okay. Uh, the CNN video, from my understanding, is uh, it was received from CNN by the people. Uh, it was requested February 21st of this year and a response was submitted by CNN on February 26th of this year, which shows a limited clip of what was aired and not the complete footage of. For everything to be put in context, there has to be a full disclosure of an interview. Uh, the people, by their request, appears to have intentionally limited to what uh, their request of what CNN is supposed to deliver so they can avoid the rule of completeness. Uh, that does not show a fairness and a due process uh, discovery for the truth. Uh, to allow this type of playing of a recording uh, where people know it has been edited uh, to where we cannot get the full interview, or I shouldn't say no. It's safe to assume it was edited. Um, and they didn't ask for the unedited version. They asked for just the parts they wanted. And then uh, my understanding is it's our responsibility supposed to get the rest of this video from a news organization outside of this state at the end of trial. Um, this is grossly untimely to even try and attempt to do this at the last day of trial. Um, I don't think that in any way this is something that reports to a, a fair trial for Mr. Merritt. Now the defense is required to attempt to try and work through an issue with another entity try and get the complete record so we can make sure that the jury gets a full understanding of an interview at the last second. Uh, <clears throat> this is just uh, inappropriate. Also, the relevance of this statement is that we've discussed before. I believe the people want to say, well, Mr. Merritt said he was the last person to see the victim, so obviously he's, that's an admission he killed them. Well, that's not what he actually said on the interview. He said, I was the last person to see him in Rancho. Um, and they said, well, you're the last person to see it. He has the last person to see that. That is no relevance. That's not an admission. That's a description of the facts that we already have. So this would be cumulative. If they're trying to put a false spin on that to say that's an admission that he did the killing, then that would be a, a misrepresentation of, of that fact. Um, they're attempting to misrepresent fact to the jury, which is a lack of candor. Um, and the court should exclude this as more prejudicial than any relevance that could possibly be gleaned from such a statement, and the defense's request would be for the court to just exclude this whole thing to eliminate that issue for uh, the CNN interview. Well, I mean, you have certainly had noticed that that was something that the prosecution uh, may intend to use at some point. They never provided it in discovery. There was no notice that they were going to play this. And then we only have a 50-second clip, and I understand the interview is a lot more than that. So to say we had notice is, is, would not be accurate. This is not something we have seen before, given notice before, even in their opening statement that they're going to play this. So to say that all of a sudden now uh, we should be prepared for this, I think, is unrealistic. Well, first of all, Aaron, we didn't make promises in our opening statement that we couldn't keep. Second of all, uh, they've had notice of this, and they've known of the defendant's statements to CNN since they came onto this case. So they are clearly aware of it. They're also clearly aware of it in the fact that it almost came into evidence through the testimony of Detective Smith, and the court raised a foundational issue um, that we cured. So the last minute aspect of this, and the ascribing an intent and reading our mind on our intent, is baseless, as usual. And so they've had plenty of knowledge as it is. As to 356, they're free to play the entire interview if they can um, and if they want. However, the edited version we took 
uh, that we have marked this morning takes out the commentator discussion before that does not include the defendant. The evidence, we've narrowed it down to simply the defendant's statements, not the talking heads that occurred minutes and hours before the commentary by the host or anything like that, because that would be kind of rank hearsay and speculative. We limit it to the act, defendant's actual statements. Um, as to what our motive was in requesting it, again, it's speculation. We asked them to produce a copy of uh, the video of their interview of the defendant. CNN chose to provide what they provided, and they provided a declaration for that. And again, ascribing intent on our part to avoid the rule of completeness. The rule of completeness is not our tool at this point. It would be their tool. I'm not quite sure how we avoid the rule of completeness when we offer a piece of evidence. It's a tool that they would use to do it. And just because we choose to air 15 or 50 seconds of an interview, um, that does not mean the rule of completeness is unavailable to them. What I'm looking at, Your Honor, is the request from the district attorney's office. And it says they only want a copy of the footage that's aired. They did not request a copy of all footage that was taped during their interview with uh, Mr. Merrick. Again, ascribing intent to us, Mr. McGee is unaware of our continued negotiations with CNN to make requests for the unaired footage. So if you'd like to delve into our work product a little more and speculate, we'll be more happy to in chambers off the, or out of the presence of the public and defense counsel as our work product. So the affidavit by CNN indicates that the DVD that they're providing is a true and an accurate of the video that was posted on the CNN YouTube website. and they then indicate where the videos are posted. Um, but it doesn't say it's not an unedited uh, well, the, a copy of, of an interview. We don't know if anything's taken out of context, and there's no witness that we're going to be able well, to cross I, I understand that, and the, what the people are able to obtain from the news network, they are somewhat reluctant to give even what they have aired. They definitely will not give to the people uh, material that was not aired. Whether or not they could be compelled to do that by the defense is a closer issue. Um, uh, so, and there is if, if, if the people had said, we only want this one segment of what was aired, that might be an issue. Uh, but apparently it's easy to get everything that was aired. Um, yeah, Your Honor, I so I, I, I think they're entitled to put on uh, the evidence of what was aired. Uh, I'm willing to uh, advise the jury that this is only what was aired. There may or may not be uh, additional comments that were uh, edited or cut or not aired by CNN. Your Honor, I also know for the record that the complete transcript of that full broadcast called Buried Secrets was provided in discovery, and they've had it since they came onto this case. So they've had the transcript of it. So we'll give you the page number shortly as soon as we pull it up. My issue is, is the request that I see there is they only requested the aired footage. They sent it. Right, what was posted on YouTube. That's it. Uh, they're saying it's work product, the other conversations we had with CNN. That's not work product. Work product is very detailed. It's the actual thoughts and analysis of the facts with inside the legal team. If they're having contact with a third party, that's not work product. That's discovery. And they should be providing that. We don't know what conversations they've had. We don't know what efforts were done. What we do have 
The sole record we have is what's before that court, which the court said, if this is all they did, you'd have an issue with. And that's all the evidence we had of what they did. Is they requested a posting on YouTube, which is based on my pulling it up on my phone right now, is a two minute and 12 second interview with commentary before, could be an edited interview, and then commentary, I think, after, without any context. This, uh, without a witness to explain whether or not this is edited, this is a proper foundation, or this is a true and accurate description of the conversation, there's no foundation for it. And it should be excluded until they establish that. Just because it's, it's a video received from CNN and that's a business record, that doesn't make it valid. That is not retain, uh, created in the daily course without any kind of correction. This is not something that's admissible as presented, and we would ask that it be excluded. Uh, I think the affidavit and production <laughs> of the DVD in response to the subpoena DT that was issued is a sufficient foundation. I think that uh, the only material that the prosecution is capable of obtaining from a news network is the uh, public or aired portion, uh, and they've obtained that, and I think they can put that on. I, uh, apparently, the, prosecu the prosecution provided the transcript of that material in, in discovery, so the defense uh, had the opportunity to attempt to uh, subpoena any uh, unaired portions. Certainly the defense has uh, issued subpoena DTs for bank records, phone records, uh, all kinds of different materials and records, and it's held OSC hearings when there's been a failure to comply. So they certainly could have done that with uh, CNN. Uh, but I, I think there's been an adequate, uh, as I say, I think the production pursuant to the subpoena DT with the affidavit is a sufficient foundation. And there's still the relevance issue that, that uh, is part of our objection to 352. There's no relevance and the prejudice that will be stated by their intended argument, which they said at sidebar, this is not speculation, that this is him admitting to kill him. Um, I don't see that admission there. The court, I don't think, sees that admission there based on the comments at sidebar. Um, and to allow them to present this for that intent, um, I think, is would be a violation of 352. I would ask for a reporter's transcript citation as to where Mr. Dowdy said he said he killed them. Because I don't believe that exists. That was not our offer of proof on that sidebar. Okay. We, we have the DVD. Can we play it? I can play it right now. It's already hooked up. It's only a couple of minutes, right? Actually, the edited version is only 15 seconds because <laughs> okay. while taking out the context or the commentary by the talking heads in the show. Do we have a, like a question to him? That yes. You'll hear it. Yes. Okay. Can you sure. see the mark that we're playing? Yes, it'll be the same one I had marked this morning, digital copy of that. What's the number? Nine. What is it, Miss? Is it the... Uh, Yes. 951. Okay. Oops, hold on. We're on mute. Would you like to see the video or just hear the audio? Uh, just the audio, probably. So you said you cooperated a great deal with authorities. You were questioned by detectives. What did they ask you? The standard questions, you know, just... Do I know anything about them disappearing? Um, did I have anything to do with it? Um, just, just the standard questions, and probably they asked everybody. As far as you know, you were the last person, or at least one of the last people to see him, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, when he left Rancho Bucamonga, nobody else, uh, although I, th I think somebody there's another person or two that he talked to. I'm not sure. Um, but you were the last person he saw. I'm definitely the last person he saw.
free to articulate their own relevance on what this statement is, so we won't be speculating about what they want to present it for. More than welcome. Well, if it wasn't for the very last line, I would tend to agree with uh, the defense. Uh, the, the first question, so you were the last person, or at least one of the last people to see him. Yeah, he left Rancho, nobody else, although I think somebody, another person or two that he talked to, I'm not sure. That doesn't have any particular relevance, but then the follow-up, but you are the last person he saw, the emphatic, I am definitely the last person he saw, I think, arguably has some relevance. Obviously, there is a counter-argument to that, the same as with all of the evidence, but I think it has sufficient relevance uh, that the people are entitled to put it on. About the prejudicial impact and the inference that well, that dollars to donuts. I know what the people are going to argue in their closing. I think uh, the prejudice is substantially outweighs any minor relevance of a uh, statement as made. Well, you can't argue that it's not relevant and then argue that it's too prejudicial. Sure, I can. So. Obviously, any potentially incriminating evidence that the prosecution puts on is prejudicial uh, to the defendant. That's not the standard. Uh, the standard is does it have some relevance? As I said, the, the emphatic nature of the last statement, I think, is sufficient that it does have uh, relevance. It can be I can see the argument that can be made by the prosecution. I can certainly see the contrary argument to be made by uh, the defense that anyone who may have been the last person to see someone before they disappeared and before they were ultimately killed by some unknown perpetrator may be may say I'm the last person to see him. That doesn't necessarily constitute an admission that I'm the one who killed him. But, as I say, I think the nature of the last statement is sufficient that it does have relevance. Uh, so the objection on both relevancy grounds and evidence for 352 is overruled. And, and just so the record's clear, we're also objecting for a failure or inability to cross-examine the interviewer because they're not producing that witness to show contents of those statements. Subpoena. They can subpoena. I don't have to produce them. They're producing a, uh, an interview without the witness that actually interviewed them. We And that's, that's another one. can't produce the defendant either. Well, that was, that was the basis of the courts originally sustaining the defense objection is the lack of foundation. Uh, but I think uh, something that's submitted with an affidavit pursuant to a subpoena DT is sufficient foundation to allow the disability. It doesn't, it's, we're not challenging whether or not that interview was a property of CNN. What we're challenging is, is that's a true and accurate representation of the contents of that interview. That has to be established through testimony, because we have a right to confront that witness. They have not presented anybody to lay that foundation. They, as if Detective or Sergeant Smith interviewed my client. Dr. Detective Smith, again, the stand said, I interviewed him on this date, and this interview is a true and accurate representation of our conversation. Play. That's a requirement. They have not satisfied that. We have no way that we can sit here. I understand your argument to that effect, as I indicated, I think. The affidavit in response to the subpoena DT is sufficient foundation. <coughs> so the objections are overruled. Okay, then you wanted to, there's some additional photographs or diagrams. Uh, 
Yeah, on, on the uh, last CNN interview, uh, my colleague just has the one question on the admonish, but the court was going to read the jury. Can we hear that again, or can we have that clarified? I'm sorry? You said you're going to admonish the jury about the interview. I, I will uh, advise the jury that it, uh, this is a clip of what CNN aired. Uh, there may or may not have been uh, additional comments made in the course of the interview that were not aired by CNN. Okay. Uh, on the matter of the uh, exhibits 933 through 945, I understand yeah, I see those. Detectives, Sergeant Smith wish to testify to lay foundation. Let me, let me see him first to see what we're talking about. Appear to be the uh, ferro scans of 
the defendant's truck, correct? Correct. Okay, and then... Nine forty one and nine forty two. Appear to be photographs of the rear of the defendant's truck, correct? Uh kind of, yes. And nine forty is that one of the ferro skins, or is that a photograph? No, that's actually a photograph of the taillight on the defendant's truck to show the nature of the housing, that it's clear plastic. What portion of the taillight? Taillight. Oh, taillight. Yes. So instead of it being a recessed taillight, like in most vehicles, it appears to be an aftermarket with a clear plastic housing rather than black, which causes the light to disperse differently than it would if it was recessed like normal. Well, obviously, the uh, actual photographs of the defendant's vehicle, anyone who viewed the vehicle can testify that that's a photograph of his vehicle and it shows whatever portions of the vehicle it shows. Well, there is some issue that I have uh, of the 940. Let's start with 940. Uh, I'm looking at a photograph from the Sheriff's Department of the of Mr. Merritt's truck, and this one's few photographs I can see of that rear tail light. It appears at the bottom of that, there seems to be some kind of, I don't know if that's cardboard taped on the bottom, or there's something taped on the bottom that restricts the light coming out from the bottom. That is different than what is being shown in this photograph. So I don't know if the foundation for those pictures are a true and accurate representation okay. of the I, condition of the truck at the time my client owned that, it. That's a matter of question. The actual photographs of the vehicle, I don't have a problem with. I think the, the issues are the I, I have objection to uh, 35 and 935 and 936. That's my primary objection. The other ones I, I don't have a major objection. Okay. So, well, I shouldn't say that. But those are the ones that stand out to me as my primary objection. Yeah, 935 and 936 are the two photographs uh, with the surveillance photo of the front of the vehicle in the surveillance photo with a superimposed photograph uh, or feral scan of the defendant's vehicle to the left of that. And then 938 and 939 are, again, the surveillance photos of what appears to be the rear portion of the rear of the vehicle and then superimposed to the left of that is the feral skin of the defendant's truck with an arrow towards the tailpipe and an arrow towards what I'm guessing the prosecution claims is the tailpipe in the surveillance photo. And, and I can be very frank with the well, I think. Oh, well, I think those two I think are fair representations of the, the facts, and I think it's a fair argument that that is the tailpipe. I, I'm not disputing that. My problem with the 95 and 96 is the Faro image that is being used does not show that the parking lights are on, which is the evidence I've already established through not only Sergeant Smith but others that those have to be eliminated. Even the video that we played from the Sheriff's Department they have to be illuminated. The okay. parking lights on the ferro skin? Correct. Those are not illuminated, so it's giving a false representation of what Mr. Merritt's truck would actually be like when compared next to the video. I thought the evidence was that on Mr. Merritt's truck that if the 
headlights are on, the parking lights are automatically on. Correct. That is accurate. And that feral picture is showing it just headlights without the parking lights also on. And that's our objective. I'm sorry, which, which exhibit? Because you said 56 and there's no 56. Oh, 36. 35 and 36. 35 and 36. 935 and 36. So I'm saying they're not an accurate representation of Mr. Merrick's truck. So that would be, uh, that would give a well, false impression as to the state of his vehicle in comparison to that video. An offer of proof is that actually the lights are on in that feral. I thought that was the testimony of the... That will be the testimony of Sergeant Smith. Well, I thought that was the testimony of the person who did the feral scans that it was done with the... Well, this is a new feral scan that was done subsequent to that testimony oh. that Sergeant Smith, I believe, was involved in in some way getting these scans. So these are new. My issue <coughs> is, is the lights aren't showing with the same bright and intensity that the headlights are. If they say they're on, that's not the presentation I see. I don't think that's the presentation the jury's going to see. And I ask that 935 and 936 be excluded as it gives the false impression as to the same Well, I, I think we probably need to call Sergeant Smith to lay a foundation as to what was done to create these exhibits. Okay. So we ready to do that? Sure. Okay. We will call Sergeant Smith. Although I may need to steal those exhibits from the court in order to <laughs> walk it through the foundation. I'm going to get all of these. The actual, just the, the stills by themselves of the surveillance. You don't need to go through those. With him. Okay. No. You're reminded you're still under a yes, you're not. <clears throat> Sergeant Smith, uh, in an attempt to create some trial exhibits, was there an effort made to re-scan the defendant's truck? Yes, sir. When did that occur? That occurred on Monday and Tuesday, I believe it was. February uh, 11th, something to Tuesday, if I'm looking at the calendar correctly. February 11th would be the Monday, and February 12th. Okay. And was part of the reason for doing that was to get a more complete, thorough data cloud of the truck? Yes. Okay. In that process, was it scanned without the headlights on? It was scanned with the headlights off and with the headlights on. So it sounds like you did basically two scans. Well, there's multiple scans for each situation, but we did, yes, we did one, if you want to call them process, or a scan process, one with all the lights off outside, and then we took the, uh, the truck inside of the CSI garage, closed the door, illuminated all of the lights, put the brake lights on, and then did a second series of scans. And briefly for the court, can you describe your experience with using the FARO system and the FARO data that it produces? Uh, I've been involved with using the FARO system since 2014. Um, I used it in accident reconstruction and I've used it as a detective in homicide. Uh, I'm familiar with the scanning process. I've completed scans. I've also uh, process the scans on the computer uh, back at Sheriff's Headquarters. Um, and I've used this for, as I mentioned, in cases such as accident reconstruction, uh, homicides, officer-involved shootings, and custody deaths. After completion of the scans of the truck with both the lights on and off, did you access that data to um, secure some imagery to compare to the Mitchley video, which is Exhibit 418? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you exhibit number 935. Do you recognize that? I do. How do you recognize it? Uh, this is a photograph of the Mitch Lee video surveillance with a uh, photograph of Mr. Merritt's truck. Um, and this is the scan that had all the lights on uh, placed inside the, or superimposed inside the video surveillance picture. Okay. 
936. Do you recognize that? I do. And how do you recognize that? This is also a photograph of the Mitchley video surveillance with a, another photograph of the ferro scan placed um, inside the image. Is the, that ferro image one with the lights on or the lights off? Correct. All of the lights are on. 938, do you recognize that? I do. This is also a photograph of the Mitchley video surveillance um, with the rear portion of uh, Mr. Merritt's vehicle uh, superimposed inside of the video surveillance picture. And that image taken from the ferro scan, is that uh, with the lights on or off? Uh, with the lights on. Exhibit number 939, do you recognize that? I do. How do you recognize that? Uh, this is a close-up of the... Uh, same picture that we saw in exhibit 938 um, of the rear portion of Mr. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, this is a different picture. It's the same type of picture focusing on the rear portion of Mr. Merritt's vehicle. Uh, however, the, uh, the Faro scan is, is to the right of the video surveillance as opposed to the left. And is that Faro image one of the truck with the lights on or off? Uh, it's with the lights on. Uh, and real quickly, 945, 40. 43 through 45 inclusive, those three images are taken from the Faro as well? Yes, sir. And are those with the lights on or off? This is with the lights on. Is that the lighting pattern you can see on the ground underneath uh, the truck and behind the truck and in front of the truck? Yes, those are all as a result of the truck lights. Being on? Yes. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. So you're the one who actually... Uh, was doing the ferro scans on February 11th and 12th? Uh, no, that was um, uh, Mike Russ, who testified previously about the ferro scans. I was involved with him and directed him, and I was present for the first series of scans in 2014. And then you retrieved those scans from the computer? Yes, sir. Scans that you retrieved from the computer, are they a fair and accurate depiction of what you knew at the time that the, that the scans were made? Yes. them since 2014, or actually even prior to that, but um, not with homicides with traffic reconstruction. How does the ferro scan record the lumens intensity of light that are being captured? Objection relevance. Overruled. That would be a technical question. Uh, as for, for someone who knows how to service and process those, my experience with the ferro is how to operate it. Uh, how to make sure it's in working order, how to um, process the scans after they're done. So I don't know the intricacies of um, the specifications. And, and you understand what I meant by lumens, correct? A lumens of measure of light, correct? Correct. The intensity of the light, right? So like, if you, like a flashlight, you buy a flashlight, they come in different lumens ratings of 30, 50, 70, it, it's higher. The higher the number, the brighter the light, correct? Yeah, yes, sir. And so you're not certain how, you can't testify foundationally how the ferro records or um, processes data on the lumens intensity of any lights being captured. That's your testimony. Yeah. No, sir, I, I couldn't testify that. this witness would not have the necessary foundation to, or necessary knowledge to lay the foundation that these be a true and accurate representation uh, of the truck through the ferro images since he cannot testify to as to the uh, lumens issue 
as to the intensity of the lights as demonstrated on the feral screen in relation to my objection on 935 and 936. The other images, um, I think, I don't have a problem with realistically. So how would that be any different than if they took a photo, just a photograph with a regular 35 millimeter camera and said, yes, that's a fair and accurate depiction of what I viewed at the time. And you said, well, do you know how well the camera reflects the lumens of light uh, that actually existed? And the person says, no, I don't know how the camera does that. All I can tell you is that's a fair and accurate depiction of what I viewed. Because when uh, Mr. Is it Russ? Yes. Mr. Russ testified, um, he said one of the difficulties of lumen or feral scans are when they are detecting things that's reflective, which would be headlights, uh, because the laser does not bounce off those well and capture that image very well. And so that becomes a major issue. The major contention in this, in this case, and the court has heard us say it, this can't be that our client's vehicle because you have to have those park running lights going when the headlights are on. They're not shown in the video. Now, if they get to show a feral scan next to it without those parking lights as illuminated brightly as they would be the headlights, or the headlights are, then that's a misrepresentation of the facts, and that's a misrepresentation of my client's vehicle. So they're trying to pull the wool over the jury's eyes to say, we have this issue, so let's just eliminate that issue by presenting photographs that don't accurately represent the state of my client's vehicle as it would be shown in that video. So I say there's no foundation. Either Mr. Ross or one of the other witnesses, uh, when they viewed the Mitchley surveillance video and were specifically asked by you about it doesn't show the parking lights being on, they said that yes, it does. You can see the reflection of the parking lights off of the bumper. So that was, I believe, Sergeant Smith, okay. not, not Mr. Russ. That's about uh, analysis of the actual video. I understand I have to deal with that. What I'm saying is to put a feral scan next to that to make a representation that this is what it would look like, that's misrepresenting the actual facts. And that's my objection is linking those two together when they can't demonstrate if those are an accurate representation in that feral scan of how bright the lights would be and how bright they are in that in that time frame or in that circumstance. All right. I think there's a sufficient foundation uh, to allow that testimony in those exhibits. I think those arguments go to the weight to be given those. But we would be denied our cross-examination on that issue because his response would be, I don't know. I don't know how they work. And that's our problem, is he's going to say this is a fair and accurate representation without being able to say why. And so that's why I'm saying. If they called uh, Mr. Russ here to testify to him, and he can answer questions intelligently, he appears to be the technical advisor who would know the answers, so be it. But I think having him come through Mr. our detective or Sergeant Smith uh, I think would be uh, a denial of our chance or opportunity to cross the family on that issue. Uh, again, I think it's the same as if there is a photograph uh, taken with a standard 35 millimeter camera and you ask the same question, how does the camera reflect the lumens of light of the headlight or any other source of light? And most people taking the photograph are probably not going to be able to answer the technical details of that. The, the only issue that we are having is this is not a photograph, that's apples and oranges. This is a computerized model recreation of what the computer sees, and that's not the same as a photograph. We're comparing a video and a photograph together. Okay. This is Again, a, I, I think there is sufficient evidence. Uh, there is sufficient evidence for a sufficient foundation to allow that to be presented to the jury as a potential comparison. And the arguments as to similarities or dissimilarities or lack of information goes to the, uh, 
to the weight to be given. And okay, so I, I think there's a sufficient foundation. The objection is overruled. Your Honor, uh, thank you uh, for that. Um, can we have the photographs? Uh, I just for, I, I, oh, do you have them on I, I, Okay, I know, but I'm going to Yeah. If we just have the exhibits for two minutes and then we'll call the jury in. Sure. We'll give it two minutes, thank you. Sure. I think to the testimony of uh, Sergeant Smith, he just wanted a correction on the date when they were done. It was still Monday and Tuesday, but it was the 19th and 20th. No objection. That'd be the 18th and 19th. <sighs> okay, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Correction number two. <laughs> just to advise the court for scheduling issues, I know we breached it on Thursday, or broached it on Thursday. Um, we do have that one witness, Eugene Licio, that's not available to March 12th. Other than that, this is our last presentation of evidence. I guess the court invited a conditional rest. I don't know how it wants to deal with that or rest with a uh, motion to reopen come that I'm, day. I'm willing to allow you to uh, rest subject to the admission of uh, exhibits and subject to uh, reopening the call uh, to call one witness. Motion to reopen. And that would probably be uh, within the assess when that would be. Sure. Uh, if the defense objected to it being in the middle of their case, I would probably let them finish their case and basically you can do it as rebuttal. Okay. Thank Sounds you. Sounds like if they have, uh, if they're going to be presenting any evidence about uh, photo scans, photo gametry, uh, then that would probably be appropriate rebuttal in any respect. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I'm guessing you're probably not ready to start evidence today? That would be an accurate assumption, Your Honor. Okay. I, I, would you be ready tomorrow? No, Your Honor. But my request, and Mr. Moline said don't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway, my request would be following Monday. Um, Mr. Moline says we could probably do it by Thursday. Uh, I didn't know this was going to end this quickly. Uh, I wasn't given notice that this was going to happen. We want to get, be able to coordinate our witnesses, figuring out, because we're eliminating some. That's kind of our goal, is to shorten this up. Um, and so the more... So if I gave you that amount of time, then by Thursday, or Friday, you would be able to give an accurate uh, witness list to the prosecution? Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm probably willing to do that. Well then, as I indicated at the court, Eugene Ulysio is available the 12th, which would be Tuesday. If we so, end up taking a knee for the entire week. We, we My just, suggestion would be we just rest on Tuesday after him. And then we can spend this week to get ours together, get our witnesses uh, coordinated. Just how long is that witness going to take? Yeah, I would assume Tuesday. I would assume probably mo most of the day Tuesday. And then we can start. He's a lot more articulate than. Um, <laughs> he's a very articulate individual, so I, I think it'll be a very smooth presentation of evidence. And, and he wrote a full detail. As pretty foreign as Dr. Rubens. <laughs> I, I'm not going to compare apples and oranges. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I guess that makes sense if we're, if we're going to go over to the 11th uh, rather than start with the defense on the 11th and then try to interrupt, just go to the 12th, let them finish up, 
Um, is his testimony going to be similar conclusion to Dr. Rudin that he cannot eliminate the defendant's truck? It is similar, I guess, in that respect. Um, I mean, he's, I think it's a little more detailed. Okay, I mean, he's not going to say, uh, I can definitely say that is the truck. No. Okay. He's saying based on unique class characteristics. Okay. So, uh, so if you wanted to make an 1118 motion uh, at the close of evidence today, I think we could probably discuss that. Uh, I mean, obviously, if the evidence was going to be, uh, I can positively identify that is his truck, then we would have to wait for that. But if it's going to be, can't eliminate it, could be consistent, I don't think that changes. Uh, I don't think that's going to be definitive on the rule one way or the other. So we can do that today rather than finish the evidence on the 12th and then have to take some time to do the other That That seems great. If, if you were intending to make one, I don't know. Well, we, it'd be ineffective assistance of counsel if we didn't, so I think we have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so why don't we cover the jury? It's going to be about 10 minutes or so. And then, Mr. Moline, you can go up and uh, uh, satisfy Judge Moore. And... All right, the uh, record flip, we are back in session. Parties and counsel are present. All members of our jury and our opening are present. I apologize for the delay in getting started uh, this morning. The attorneys indicated they had some issues that they wanted to discuss with the court before proceeding with uh, evidence before you this morning. Uh, I thought that was going to take a few minutes. It took a little bit longer, unfortunately. So I apologize uh, for that. Uh, but we are ready to resume, so uh, people may call your next witness. People have asked to recall Sergeant Smith for a brief matter. Okay. Sergeant Smith, uh, prior to today's testimony, did you prepare some exhibits comparing the Faro data of the scan of the defendant's truck with that of the Mitchell rule? Yes, sir. Okay. Objection is foundation is the Faro rule. Was there a, ferro, a more complete Faro scan done of the defendant's truck recently? Yes, sir. When was that? That was on uh, February 18th and February 19th of this year. I'm going to start with Exhibit 933. Do you recognize that? I do. Deputy Crosby, can I have attorney two, please? Yes. And can you describe that for us, please? Uh, this is a still photograph of uh, Jennifer Mitchell's video surveillance. And what's depicted in this uh, frame that you took a uh, screenshot of? Uh, so in this exhibit, I captured a screenshot of the headlights when they first appeared into view. Or when they appeared into view, I would say, first. And then 934, do you recognize that? I do. And how do you recognize that? Uh, this is another screen capture of Jennifer Mitchell's video surveillance, and this shows a more complete picture of the truck. You see both headlights. So looking then at 935, what did you do with that? Uh, so exhibit 935, which you guys will see, is a still picture of Jennifer Mitchell's video surveillance. 
and then it has a photograph of uh, Mr. Merritt's truck, which was scanned by the um, 3D digital scanner. That 3D digital scanner is in black and white? Uh, it can be in both black and white and color. This one is in black and white. Why did you choose black and white in this case? Uh, because the video is in black and white. If the video were in color, we would have put it in color. And showing you exhibit 936. Do you recognize that? You do? Please describe it for us. This is another uh, still photograph of uh, Jennifer Mitchell's video surveillance um, with another picture of Mr. Merritt's uh, truck um, placed into the video or placed into the picture. Showing you exhibit 937, do you recognize that? Yes, sir. Please describe it for us. This is, again, Jennifer Mitchell's video surveillance. Um, this is a screen capture of uh, when the truck is almost passed through the entire frame um, and the brake lights were illuminated, and you can see a uh, what appears to be a low hanging tailpipe. A low hanging tailpipe? Yes. With that in mind, did you create 938? Yes, sir. And can you describe that for us? So 938 is that same still of the Mitchley video surveillance. Um, Pause where you can see the, and I'll point it with the laser. You can't see it. You may want to look at some of the LED monitors. But this video is pointing to a low hanging tailpipe, or what appears to be a low hanging tailpipe. And then I put another arrow um, at the rear of Mr. Merritt's vehicle, illustrating the same tailpipe. And you might be able to see it a little bit better on the other monitors rather than the one up at front. And showing you exhibit number 939. Do you recognize that? I do. Describe it for us, please. Uh, this is along the same lines. This is a video still of the Mitchell video surveillance, uh, as well as a screenshot of Mr. Merritt's um, vehicle, and it has arrows pointing to the low-hanging uh, tailpipe. Specifically, uh, when the new Ferro scan was done of the defendant's truck, was it done with the lights on or off? The lights for the vehicle were all on, as well as the brake lights illuminated. Showing you exhibit number 940 for identification, you recognize that? I do. And can you describe it for us? Uh, this is a close-up photograph of the rear brake light uh, on Mr. Merritt's truck, and it's... Uh, it was taken to show the housing of the brake light because the brake lights aren't um, inside the fender well or anything. They're actually outside uh, and they are illuminated all around or they will be when they're turned on. So exhibit number 941, do you recognize that? I do. This is a photograph of the, the same brake light housing you see on the screen now, um, but illuminated. Forty-two. Nine forty-two is a side view of the brake light housing, and um, the photograph was taken to illustrate how the brake light illuminates the rest of the room as well as the uh, the ground. Were you able to pull imagery of that lighting effect? from the Faro data that itself? Yes, sir. So I'm going to start with exhibit number 943. Do you recognize that? I do. Um, this is a photograph and 3D rendering of the truck um, from the Faro. So this is the data that we can pull out after we do the scans to create the 3D model. Um, and this photograph specifically uh, shows the angle or a similar angle to what may have been taken from the Mitchell video surveillance. <coughs> Exhibit.
exhibit number 944. Do you recognize that? I do. This is a, a similar picture. Okay, this is the 3D scan. It's a photograph of the passenger side of the vehicle that shows the rear um, lights and, as well as all the lights illuminated. And then exhibit number 945. Exhibit number 945 is a top-down view of the uh, pickup truck um, from the 3D scan data. So I want to ask specifically about Exhibit 944, I'm sorry, here's 945 displayed. <clears throat> so in nine, I'll start in 945 first. Up here in the top where I'm pointing up here, the whitish marks into the reddish marks, do you see those? I do. Is that something in the Faro data itself? or is that cast off from the tail lights being illuminated? Objection, foundation. Overall, you can answer if you know. So the, the lights on the ground that you see to the right and the left of the picture, those are from the brake lights. That's, the brake lights are on when the scan was taken, and you see the illumination on the ground as a result of the brake lights being on. So if I go back to 944, that same pattern, lighting pattern on the ground is, is what we saw in 945 with the brake lights illuminated? Correct. This is a different angle, but you see in the middle of the photograph here, the white uh, portions on the picture are as a result of the brake lights being illuminated and the, um, the light being displayed on the ground. Looking back at... Nine thirty-seven. This is just from the Mitchley video when the brakes are applied on the vehicle. Yes. Sir. You see lighting patterns on the ground um, when the brakes were applied in that video as well. Yeah, you can see it on the main screen here. It's probably a better visual if you look at the, the side monitors, but you do see that the ground, uh, it would be in the upper right-hand portion of the um, photograph here, is illuminated, um, and this would be the, what appears to be a low-hanging tail pipe. If I can go back to 938, and I'm just going to use this for an exemplar, because uh, it shows the back storage area in the truck. Did you have a chance to examine the latches on the storage boxes on the truck? Yes, sir. You had testified previously about the recovery of the vehicle and that the only substantial change to the vehicle was that the bed had been painted. Is that correct? That's correct. I, that was several months ago, I know. But um, did you examine the latches specifically to see if they had also been painted over? Yes, I, I did, and the latches had been painted over. They were white in color. Uh, white color with the new paint, or, the, or what they With the like? new paint. They're currently white in color. Uh, when you scrape the paint away, what did it appear to be? It's, it's metal underneath. Like, it's metal. It's not chrome or anything. Like gray or silver metal? <laughs> yes. Okay. Nothing further? Uh -huh. uh, yes, sir. Now, you said that the uh, Faro scan that were taken for this case were taken just a couple weeks ago, correct? Well, there were multiple Faro scans. There were scans taken in 2014, and there were additional scans taken um, in February of this month, of this year. And when you took these Faro scans that are on these exhibits, you tried to mimic the uh, distance and angle that would have been on the Mitchley video? Mm. Yes and no. Um, that's something you can do within the program. However, where we placed the Faro devices was just around the car. So, 
because I remember before that was not highlighted in some of the other testimony, but you said on direct that the images shown of the ferro scan of my client's truck at the time is attempting to present it from an angle that would be the Mitchell videos capturing of that vehicle? There was one of the exhibits that we saw, which was kind of up in a way. Um, that would be a representation that's not presented as, hey, this is where the video camera is. I, I can't do that. But it is a representation of uh, an approximate angle. And you, we still have exhibit, and which one is this? Is this uh, 937? It may be. He has them all up there. Is that 937 showing? That's on right now? Yes. Uh, 938. Is it 938? So we have 938, which is a comparison or a side by side that you created that shows the uh, Mitchley video on the right with a blue arrow and then the feral scan of my client's truck on the left. Would that be accurate? Yes, sir. And so it's kind of washed out on the screen up here, but I'm looking at the screens here. There's a blue arrow that is pointing to the exhaust pipes on both pictures, correct? Yes, sir. And you can see clearly the exhaust pipe here um, in the ferro scan on the left-hand side of this exhibit, 938? Yes, sir. And uh, you say the exhaust pipe is this dark area here that's between the, the lighter areas next to the blue arrow? Yes, sir. And what's this light above? That's the tail light, correct? Objection assumes facts on evidence calls for speculation. Oh, we're all right. No, sir, that's not the tail light. It's not the tail light? No. Is it the marker light on the side? Uh, I couldn't tell you what it is. It, it could be, it could be a reflection, but it's not the, uh, the rear brake lights because you see those turn on if you're watching the video. It's a reflection. Is, is that not the same light that goes all the way through when the vehicle drives? Objection, this video. Mistakes his testimony and assumes facts, not evidence. Oh, we're wrong. We can answer. Uh, no, sir, if you watch the video, you'll see it dim and, and change. However, you can notice it in multiple frames. And what's the lighting source for that uh, reflection? Well, it could be, this is speculation on my part, it could well, be... It, do you know? I believe it to be the brake lights or the Mitchley's porch light. So the Mitchley's porch light is shooting that direction and hitting an object that is facing away from it, and the reflection's coming right back at you. Objection assumes facts on evidence. Well, we you can answer if you have some opinion. And Your Honor, could counsel be admonished to not object to every question to let us conduct cross? If there's a basis for an objection, then they can make an objection. But if that objection is overruled, we can answer it. I'm going to eat the question again. So you're saying that something on that truck had a light coming from the Mitchley residence when it pulled out of the driveway, and once that item became visible below the roof of her porch, that it traced and came all the way around across that video, reflecting back when it's not perpendicular to that item. Objection. Argumentative as phrased. Good. Call for speculation. That question does call for speculation and conclusion, so the objection is sustained. Can you, can you see clearly on the picture of the screen in front of you where the end of the tailpipe is on the item on the right? Uh, I believe I can make a conclusion as to where the end of the tailpipe is, yes. And would that be... The laser's going to be showing yeah, the TV. Yeah, going to show the TV, is it? And is that this point right here? That looks accurate, yes. What I did, so I, I didn't want to 
damage the original, the printed up duplicate of that exhibit, and it's 954. 954. And I brought you a silver pen since it's black. Can you put a line kind of below it where the tailpipe ends? Yeah. This printer isn't as good in quality, but right. I would put it about right here. All right. And I'm going to publish. Uh, 9.54. If I can have the overhead, please. So we have 9.54, which is showing up, again, better on these screens here. You put that silver mark, which is in front of the blue arrow on the right side of the exhibit, correct? Yes. And... Wouldn't you say that that silver mark is to the left of whatever that reflection is? Yes, as, as I marked it, however, I would reiterate that the quality of this picture is not very good. Right. But if you look at the left, the tailpipe is nowhere close <coughs> as this marker light or this handle that you testified to, correct? You're looking at it from a different angle, so... In this picture, in the angle it is depicted, that is correct. However, this picture is not an effort. This picture is not an effort to recreate the camera. I thought you said on direct you did try to represent the angle. Objection. This states his testimony is argumentative. The statement was that one of the photographs uh, of the, the ferro skin attempted to depict the approximate angle. Okay. Which exhibit was that, that you attempted to exhibit the proper angle? 943. All right. Let's put up 943. <coughs> Oops. Again, and I'll bring this back to you so you can get a nice clear look at it. Isn't it true that the exhaust on the angle you tried to represent is below that seam for that back cabinet? From this angle, yes it is, sir. And so, based on the other highlight that you did that in the Mitchell video the exhaust pipe is either right below or to the left of whatever that reflecting item is that does not match up to the truck here correct I think you're misrepresenting it a little bit so I would say this is a different I would clarify that this is an angle from the front off and away but as I told you guys initially I don't know I don't have the ability to place a ferro scan where the uh, Michelin camera is. So now you're saying you don't know what that light is that's uh, seen on the Michelin video or the illumination <laughs> that's on the Michelin video on the vehicle that drives out of the driveway on the fourth, correct? Correct, it's, it appears to be a reflection or a light. And if it's a reflection, you would need something on the vehicle that could reflect it, right? Objection, that calls for speculation. 
I believe I'm saying the latch is what's reflecting. No, I, you haven't said it yet, but I knew that's where you were going. The latch, uh, what color was it in 2010? I don't know. And you said you scraped off the white paint that's on it when you saw the vehicle in 2014. 2019. Well, you also saw it in 2014, did you? Correct, but I didn't scrape any paint in right. 2014. But when you saw it in 2014, and I think that's exhibit uh, 403, which I will try to bring up here. If I can have it on my computer. Slowly come up. This is the condition you saw the vehicle in 2014, correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and that latch, you said in 2019, you scraped off the paint? I didn't scrape off all of the paint, but yes, I scraped to see what was underneath. And it wasn't chrome? It is not chrome, no. It's just flat metal? Yes. Do you know what color the rear portion of that vehicle was painted like in 2010? It was gray. Like a primer gray? I'll show you what's uh, page 634. Let's see if this refreshes your memory. It does in the sense that it's gray, but I can't, from the quality of this, I can't tell you if it's flat or, or polished or primer. Well, in this picture in the report, can you see uh, light reflecting off the uh, door, the passenger or driver's side door? On the on, the, on, on this one, yes. Yes. But you can't see that same reflection off of the rear, correct? No, you don't see the same type of reflection. And exhibit, I believe it was 940, which was the exhibit that showed the close-up of the side view of the brake light when it was not illuminated. Yes, sir. And I'll show you what's marked Exhibit 952. Do you recognize that exhibit? I do. This is a photograph of the vehicle as we processed it in 2014. And it was kind of clipped and zoomed into that same kind of light in your presence? Yes, sir. It's the rear uh, passenger side upper court. Yeah. And that would be the same uh, Brake light housing that was photographed in 940? <coughs> the same type, yes, sir. I'll publish this to the jury. We have uh, this one. Oh, I know that. Now looking at 940 that you have up here, it is a, a clear plastic housing for the brake light, correct? Yes, sir. And you can see 
the contents inside through the plastic housing because it's um, not opaque. Yes, sir. It's clear. And I'm showing you uh, 952, which was taken from the opposite side of the same uh, break. Um, I don't know if it's the opposite side, but it is a picture of the same break. I believe it is the opposite side. And on the bottom of the break, which you, it doesn't show up well here. You mean the brake light? Brake light housing, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the bottom of the brake light housing, uh, does it have those look like four white lines, uh, which might be some kind of internal wiring? Correct, yeah. So in the middle of the photograph, you see these four white lines that counsel's referring to going into the brake light housing. And then below that, uh, you can see it better on the picture, it appears to be some type of... Uh, I don't know, brown colored something at the bottom? Uh, I see what you're referring to. I'll show it in the main picture. It would be underneath right here. Um, it, it looks kind of discolored and, and red to me, or red-ish. Um, I don't see brown. I just saw cardboard and I saw a similar color. I'll publish this to the jury so the jury can get a better look because it's not showing well on the overhead and the TV screens are too far away. I will start, I'll start down front this time. Usually we start up back. And again, this is exhibit 952. The light housing that is in 940, do you know when that was installed? No, sir, you're not. Can you confirm that it's the same housing that is shown in the picture of 952? No, it does not appear to be the same housing. And what is different in the housing that you can identify that makes you think it may not be the same? You see in the, as you guys will see in the exhibit when it goes around, um, this brake light housing is black all the way around and then it has the clear lighting underneath it, um, coming off of these wires, and that's in the middle of the um, photograph. Uh, whereas uh, Exhibit 940, uh, it appears to be clear all the way around. So we don't know if 940 <coughs> is an accurate representation of how the uh, rear light would have illuminated, or excuse me, rear light would have looked without being illuminated. Um, I think there's similarities that can be drawn because they were both in the same position on the truck. The, the housing didn't move, but the housing, the brake light housing is different. And so also 941 is that same housing illuminated, correct? Yes. And so that may or may not be the same based on it being a different housing. Correct. The, the lighting will be in the same approximate area on the truck. The housing is in the same place, but the housing is different. In 942, I took notes as showing the shadowing on the ground from the rear brake lights. Is that my memory and my notes correct? Uh, probably not. Yeah. It's a side view where you can see the... Uh, Brake light housing, illuminated white, and then you can see shadowing on the ground from a side view. That be accurate? That's accurate. You can see that. But we don't know if that's how it exactly would illuminate it in 2014. Well, we know the lights are in the same position, but correct, the housing is different. Okay. 
be a copy of. Yep, so we're going to do that. And again, could you mark where the tailpipe ends? And would you like a digital copy of of that photograph to help? I mean, Can you put up 939 again, Mr. Imes? Can we switch? Well, I'm sorry, okay, not okay. Just connecting. Then we can um, put it on my. Again, you marked a silver line above the second P and, and tailpipe, showing the end where the tailpipe is on that um, vehicle driving in the Mitchley video. Yes, sir. And I'll publish this one for the jury as well. And again, the tailpipe in the video uh, is further away or further to the left than the illuminated item in the Mitchley video, correct? Yes, they appear about even, in my opinion, but where my mark is, it shows a little to the left. Right. And then the picture right next to it, though, the tailpipe is significantly to the right of both the rear marker and the lap handle, correct? Yes, sir, based on the angle. Now, one thing I noticed about the uh, ferrule scans, and I'll pull up, I think it's nine... 42, no, nine. this one here, which is uh, 943, which is the shot from the front passenger side, correct? Like a, a downward looking view? Yes, sir. I noticed that uh, in the bed of the truck, there seems to be no cover or roof on the bed. Correct, that's because the ferrule was not placed above the truck. So the, uh, how we can see, it looks like the driver's side brake light through the truck, that would not be an accurate representation <coughs> of being able to see that light from this angle. Yeah, that's fair to say. So, just to clarify, it should be assumed, anybody looking at this ferrule scan, that the top of that bed should be solid, um, basically showing a cover for that part of the vehicle. Correct, as well as over the cab of the vehicle, you can see a void as well. Perfect. And the ferro scan, uh, when you do the Is the intensity of the light of the vehicle when it's taken, is that accurate as to the lumens rate? Uh, I'm not technically uh, technical uh, savvy enough to, to know the lumen ratings of the Pharaoh and as they relate to the car. I, I can tell you it's a accurate depiction of the vehicle with the lights on as I saw it. But you don't know if the intensity of the light is consistent or accurate with like a identical presentation. I don't think I understand what you mean as far as identical presentation. Based on how this truck is being presented, you don't know if the, the brightness of the lights is perfectly accurate. 
the best I could tell you is they're accurate as I saw them. Um, there may be some technical aspects that I'm not familiar with. And while looking at this parallel image here from this angle, you can see uh, the two headlights, correct? Yes, sir. And you can see uh, the two tires from this side that are on the passenger side? That is correct. You can see the rear marker light that is uh, in the rear of the vehicle on the side? Uh, I'll point it out here in the middle of the exhibit, but that's going to be because the brake lights were on when this scan was taken. You're going to see the brake light as well as the marker light would be where my laser pointer is uh, showing right now in the middle of the screen. And for the record, the witness is pointing to the top left uh, edge of the side panel of the truck, which would be to the farthest left of the picture. Right, on the front, you can actually see that the parking lights are uh, on the vehicle? Yes, they are on. And the edge of the headlight does not go far as far out as the parking light in this photograph, correct? I guess it depends what you're referring to as headlights. Uh, the housing does go as far, but the actual illuminated portion does not. Does not. Let's see if I can kind of make this, if I can zoom this in. two-thirds of the way to the end of the parking lot, correct? Correct. The headlight ends about two-thirds of the housing goes the entire lane. So if you were to see the headlights in the Midgley video, you would expect to see that parking light sticking out a little bit further from that side, correct? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, no, sir. Wait, wait, wait. The objection sustained because the objection is assuming something to be true that may or may not be true.
protective for my clients to have killed this family. That has to be his truck, right? Cash and argumentative. Sustain. Offering an opinion as to whether or not that's my client's truck, right? That's not your testimony. Objection, argumentative. Well, we're all we can answer. Uh, my testimony is it's consistent with this truck, yes. Characteristic that is consistent on my vehicle, as you see in the video. The weird reflection off of what? On the video, on the side. Is on the side, or, or the reflection of the lights off the bumper? No, on the side, by the tailpipe. <coughs> okay. Is that a characteristic that is consistent with my client's truck? Uh, the truck has multiple latches and running lights, so yes. You said yourself it was a flat metal, not a, a chrome reflective metal, correct? I said it was metal, yes. I, it's not chrome. And the tailpipe is not uh, in the right position in relation to those latches on my client's vehicle for it to be in the video, correct? Objection to state of testimony. Overall, you can answer. He has an opinion. That's incorrect. And uh, the Mitchley video still, which we even have at Show parking lights, does it? Judge and argumentative mistakes his te previous testimony. Well, we can answer if he has an opinion. I disagree. Okay. Objection, argumentative. Sustained. Yes. Okay. There's no light coming past the edge of the light for the headlight as you identified would be necessary on the ferrule, correct? I didn't identify it would be necessary. I, I do see the parking light underneath, but it is being lost in the, the illumination of the headlights. It's similar to when you see a car driving down the street and you see their headlights, you won't see their running lights while their lights are on coming towards you. So you can't see the light that's on, but you can see the reflection <laughs> of the light that you don't know where it is off of a metal surface that's not chrome. Objection, argumentative. Sustained. That is that the basis of your identity, identifying my client's truck. Same objection. Sustained. I don't have anything further, Your Honor. All right, we'll go ahead and take our uh, new recess uh, at uh, 1.30 this afternoon. Keep in mind the, uh, the admonition previously given to you, not to farm or express any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case. And we'll see everyone back at 1.30 this afternoon.